Streets. We in the heart of London right now. We actually about to hop on this hop on, hop off tour, a little sightseeing. So I can knock out a couple of things in one day. Uh, I think the first stop we're gonna do is, I think it's hit the London Bridge or we'll be over by the Shard. But uh, really what I'm here for is London is like the home away from home for me. I've been coming here since 2014. I used to come every two to three months. I'm trying to get that back. But what I'm here for right now is celebrating my one year being overseas. With that being said, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I'm gonna be showing you guys some more of my personal life and as far as where I travel. London is one of my favorite cities to visit. It's a little cool now, but hey, it is what it is. One year anniversary, let me say, I don't regret it at all, man. Let's go ahead and jump on this bus. Y'all wanted me to hop on a double decker, so we own one. You know, it's kind of cool out here, but it actually, once you get in the sun, it's definitely warm. But once you get in these shadows like we are right now, it's pretty good. So we're gonna see some historic sites. Hey man, get some history behind it. We're gonna try to figure it out and see what old London has to offer. Now remember, we won the war. <laughs> Last time I was here in 2018, they were doing renovations when I actually came and looked at Big Ben. So we're gonna see the new face and everything on it now. And uh, just get a little bit of history. I might go into London I go ahead and grab me a bottle of champagne or something, pop some bubbly, you know how we do. As I was mentioning before, the face of Big Ben has changed. Now it's all gold from the last time I seen it in 2014. But a little bit of history, the original name was the Elizabeth Tower. They begun construction in 1843, and it took them about 16 years to finish in 1859. And the reason that they built this clock, the Big Ben, was to house the Great Clock and the Great Bell. And they say it weighs around 14 tons, or like 13.7, I'm thinking that they were saying. It was originally cracked, and then they had to recast it. Now, this clock is one of the largest and most accurate mechanical clocks in the world. So whenever you're lost, and you need to know what time it is, you can come on over to Big Ben and it'll tell you what it is. And the reason you know what Big Ben is is because it's recognized globally as a symbol of London and the United Kingdom. Now, with this, it does broadcast the iconic BBC radio show called Big Ben. Now, that's been going on for a while. And as I mentioned, it said it underwent construction in around 2017. That was my last time in Europe before I came back in 2023. And here we are today with it all gold. And this is a beautiful clock. I say it is a must see whenever you come to London. And it's also right across the street from the London Eye. The London Eye is right across the bridge. And we'll go past that a little bit later on in this tour. Throughout history, Big Ben has been struck by lightning several times, but that's pretty obvious. With it standing this tall, 
with a metal roof, it's a magnet to electricity. Of course, it's going to strike down. But also, the name Big Ben came from a gentleman by the name of Sir Benjamin Hall. He was a former work secretary. So, of course, with the most accurate clock in the world, well, one of the most accurate clocks in the world, of course, the work secretary would definitely need to be the name of Big Ben. So, you know to be the work on time. Along this tour, we do stop by the Victoria Palace Theater, which is a historic West End theater in London. It originally opened around 1911, and it is known for its architecture and its rich, rich history. Now, there's been a lot of amazing and countless iconic shows here, including Billy Elliot. I had to look that up and see what Billy Elliot was, but I know about the blockbuster Hamilton that is inside of here. We end up riding past a horse head. Now, I'm not sure what it is, but I've seen everyone else turning. So I said, well, I might as well record it. Here you guys go, a random horse head. I'm pretty sure it's significant, but I'm not sure what it is. But if you want to see a horse head on the tour, here you go. <laughs> so we're on the backside of Buckingham Palace now. You can see the barbed wire and all the spikes they got. It's a lot of traffic, it is midday, it's only probably like 11 in the morning. I wanted to get out here and do it early, but we're gonna swing back around, go to the Marble Arch, and then from there we'll come back, we'll actually go over to Buckingham Palace, see if we can get a glimpse of the king, see if he'll wave out to the people, you know what I'm saying, what up king? <laughs> well, I hopped off the bus, I'm gonna walk over to Buckingham Palace. It was taking too long, we got stuck in traffic. It's that midday lunch rush, and it's a Friday. So right now we're just walking through the park, headed over there now. Dogs out here barking, birds ain't chirping. But it's all right though, I like it. Now this is Buckingham Palace. You can tell by the royal gate. You have the black gates with the gold tips on it. Now originally Buckingham Palace wasn't a royal residence. It started off as a townhouse that was built in 1703 for the Duke of Buckingham, King George III. But then it was bought in 1761 for his wife, Queen Charlotte. Over the years, there has been major renovations and constructions to it, especially up under King George IV. He's the one that actually transformed it into a grand palace. Now this is what we see today and what is designed now is by a Sir Austin Webb who designed it in the early 20th century. Now Buckingham Palace became the official residence of London and the British monarch in about 1837 under Queen Victoria. It's been the setting for countless royal events from state visits and royal weddings to famous trooping and color parades. The palace, man, is very, very nice. And let me tell you, it has a very vast art collection, including arts from Rembrandt. Some of the state rooms are also open to the public during the day, kind of similar to our White House during the summer months. And it's offering just a little bit of glimpse of the British monarchy. Changing of the guard. You know, it's a lot of people out here. I was trying to get me some pictures in, but kids are running around knocking you at your place. I'm like, geez, Louise. But I will say this, Buckingham Palace, it's fit for a king, you know, RIP to the queen. I will have to get that new currency with the king on the 50, the 20, and the 5. I'm going to skip the 10, but this is pretty nice here, man. I ain't going to lie to you. I know the people be looking out the window. It's a regular work day for them. They looking at us. We, oh, man, it's beautiful. Get your ass back to work is what they be saying when they look out that window. Being that this is a hop on, hop off tour for 37 pounds, you get to go around the whole city and see everything. I decided to make a quick stop in the Piccadilly Circus in Leicester Square. You know, I had to get some drink. I got a little hungry. And this is over on London's West End. Now, there's a lot of iconic things here. It's a major area. It's got shops, restaurants, theaters, and the cinema. It has a famous statue in the middle. It's the, uh, it's the statue of Eros, and it's a bronze statue. It's the Greek god of recropriated love. 
Now, I stopped here during the daytime because I was in the middle of a tour, but you want to show up during the nighttime. It's like a miniature Times Square here. They got a lot of neon lights. Man, it's just a real cool hangout spot. You got people performing in the streets. They got the underground station right there, and then the entertainment is endless. They got the W Hotel I mentioned to you guys before. You got the M&M Factory. It's just a lot of stuff over there. You can hang out. It's a little park there. And there's a lot of things to do, to be honest with you. Chinatown's right next to it. So everything that you want to do during the daytime, or if you have a family with you, this is a good location to stop to. But be sure to go and visit in the evening when the night is lit up. I'm not going to lie to you. After I ate and I got back on the bus, I made sure that I got up front. It was a little chilly up on the top of the bus, so I made sure I was up front. And as you can see, I got that front view. We're doubling back around Big Ben and then up on the left, you're going to end up seeing the London Eye off to the left. And you cross this bridge, there's a lot of people out of there. And if you watch closely in the bottom of the screen, you're going to see this bicyclist get in the way. We're getting ready to approach the London Eye, which is also known as the Millennium Wheel. You see it's over to the left, right across the street from Big Ben. So you can get off the underground station and hop off here and go to both of them. Now, it's on the South Bank River, and if you look, that's the cyclist I was telling you about that hopped in our lane, but that's because there's a lot of tourists here. Now, it was built to celebrate the new millennium, so of course, you know it opened in 2000, and it was designed by David Marks and Julia Barfield. The London Eye is one of the largest observation wheels in the world. It's got a stunning view, panoramic, and you can see the whole city while you sip on some nice champagne or a little bit of wine. I'll let you decide on the drink for the evening. Well, it's been a very eventful day. I done hopped off, got some food, got some drink. They had a two for one deal over at this little bar I went to. They ended up throwing in a free margarita for me. Now I'm headed back around the loop. I got the I got the ticket off for of TripAdvisor for like 37. I think it's 52, and you can get the the tour on the on the boat. But I just spent the 37, and you can ride around the whole city literally. You got the blue line, the green line, the red line. So it goes all throughout London for 37 bucks. Hop on, hop off. It's really better than getting a taxi. We got the London Eye behind us. You know, we had to just change buses because the one we were just on, where you see I got the footage. Well, that bus gave out on us, so. I had a switch and now I'm at the back of the bus. Ah ha, what's that food? Everybody booze at the back of the booze. You know how it is. But right now we're just waiting to get back over on my side of town, shortage. We hit up the London Bridge, we walk past the Shard, and then I'm gonna take it on in, check it to my other hotel, and get ready for the evening, see what the festivities have to offer. London, I love it. The thing I say about London is, yeah, it's expensive because of the pound, but if you're gonna travel overseas for the first time and you want a good experience to say that you actually went out the country, come over here because there's no language barrier. So that's the good thing about it. You come over here, they speak English. It's a little different English. It's the OG English, the OG, OG English, or should I say old English, but I love it over here. The people are nice. They hear the American accent. They pretty good with everything. So, man, I love London.
I say the Tower Bridge. Very lovely. Got the water out there. You see the shore off in the distance. Hey. Hey, this hop on hop on tour is really worth it, to be honest with you. 37 bucks around the whole city. You can knock out all the sightseeing you want in one day. Hell, you can get all walk around, enjoy, have lunch, have a couple of drinks, hop back on. There ain't no country. London Bridge now, or should I say the Tower Bridge. Very lovely. Got the water out there. You can see the shard off in the distance. Nice. Hey, this hop on hop off tour was really worth it to be honest with you. 37 bucks around the whole city. You can knock out all the sightseeing you want in one day. Hell, you can get off, walk around, enjoy, have lunch, have a couple drinks. Hot back on. There ain't no country that I'd rather go to to just chill on a regular weekend than the United Kingdom. In London, you always treat me nice. And as the sun goes down, and as the sun goes down, the night begins to clown. I'm ready for it. This, uh, this is my stop over here. This is the London Wall where I got on at. So I'm gonna hop off here, head back to the crib, check into the new hotel, show y'all what that looked like, and call it an evening. Jimmy on a beat, boy.